Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com and to the first of a two-part build of an i3 Mini ITX PC. For many years now I've been doing most of my writing on this 1.6 GHz dual-core Atom computer. However, now that I need to run speech recognition software, the time has come for an upgrade. I'm going to build my PC in this Thermaltake Element Q Mini ITX case. This is a fairly compact case, but still big enough to have a 5 and a quarter and a 3 and a half inch bay at the front, and concealed behind this little door, USB 2 and front audio jacks. It comes fitted with a 220 watt power supply, and if you want, you can fit one full size expansion card. Inside the case there will of course be a motherboard, and here I'm fitting a Gigabyte Z87N. If we have a look at the board itself, you'll see in its Mini ITX form factor you've got quite a sophisticated board. We've got here a socket for a 1150 processor, one of the latest fourth generation Intel Haswell processors will, will go in here. We've also got two slots for um, DDR3 memory. Um, we've got four SATA ports, the usual sockets for power, um, a PCI Express slot, and here we've got an Intel wireless module. This provides um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and indeed Wi-Di, so you can connect wireless displays to this board if you wish. Although actually in this build, I'm going to be removing this module because I don't need to have the wireless capabilities. Finally, if we take a look around the back, you see we've got rather good connectivity on, on such a small board. You can see here the connectors for the wireless um, aerial if you use the um, radio module. We've also got here three means of connecting a monitor, a DVI eye socket, which you could also plug in a VGA adapter, two HDMI sockets, also over here two USB 2 ports and a legacy keyboard or mouse connector, always useful to have one of those to save on a USB port. Then over here we've got four USB 3 ports and we've also got two um, Ethernet ports for connecting network and of course the usual internal audio sockets. The motherboard will of course need a processor and here I'm going to fit one of the latest fourth generation Intel Haswell chips, uh, and specifically this Core i3 for 330T. This is a very nice little chip, it runs at um, 3 gigahertz, it's dual core, and it's got the latest Intel 4600 graphics. It's also got a thermal design power, a TDP, of just 35 watts, so it won't produce too much heat in the case. This does, however, come, this particular chip, in this format only, and you can only buy it in this form as what's called a tray-based processor. You get it in these bits of plastic, you don't get a, a box with it, you don't get little stickers and instructions and things. It's really intended um, for original equipment manufacturers only, but you can get them online if you try. But you do have to buy your own cooler. The specific cooler I bought is this Noctua NHL9i. Um, quite an impressive box, this, if you open it up, I don't think I've ever seen a cooler actually presented quite as spectacularly as this. Um, in the middle you've got the cooler itself with its 92mm fan on top. You've also got a little badge if you want to add it to your machine. You've got some thermal paste. Um, you've got a low noise connector to slow it down a bit if you want to produce less noise in the case. Um, I can't help thinking if James Bond wanted to walk around with a low profile cooler kit in his attaché case that this would be the one he would pick to deal with any cooler based spy emergencies. The PC will of course need some memory and here I'm going to fit 4 gigabytes of Kingston Hypergenesis DDR3 RAM. We'll also need some drives and here I'm going to be fitting this 1 to 8 gigabyte 840 Pro Series SSD from Samsung and an optical drive from LG. Next, I'm going to fit this Sound Blaster Audi FX um, sound card. You might be thinking, why am I fitting a sound card into a PC which has got onboard audio? Well, the reason is I'm building this PC in part so I can use Dragon Naturally Speaking voice recognition software. And I know from bitter experience that trying to use Dragon actually speaking with onboard audio systems, particularly Realtek HD audio, often doesn't work. Therefore, I'm going to get around the problem by fitting this external sound card. Why, however, such a big box houses such a small card, I can't tell you. Finally, I've got this rather useful piece of kit from D-Lock. This little hub allows you to fit one or two two and a half inch drives into a three and a half inch bay, plus you can have um, four USB 3 ports. 
if you look in here, you basically get the bay itself, as you, as you would guess. Inside here, you can put your, your drives, and then you've got your USB um, three ports on the front. Unfortunately, I won't be able to use all of these on this machine because it's got headers for four of them. I've only got one of these on my motherboard, but at least I can have um, one of those fitted and I'll blank off the other plates. Right, with the components all in place, it's now time to start putting them together. Although the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the wireless module. Just take this one screw out. Of course, if you want to use the wireless module, you shouldn't remove it. But here, I don't need it in my system, so I'm just going to take it out. There it is, look. And don't worry, I'll have a use for it in another project. Right, the next thing is to fit the processor. So we have to, first of all, remove the plastic cover covering the pins, and then take this little lever to uh, open up the socket. The processor will then drop in, being very careful not to touch any pins or indeed the top of the processor where we'll want our thermal paste to be. And we'll just make sure that's nice and properly positioned in the socket. Put that down on top, move the lever back, move it under, and there we are, the process is now fitted into the motherboard. Next, we need to take our cooler. Remember, this is our lovely Noctua cooler. Look how uh, I catch the light there. Look how, how gorgeous and shiny it is on, on the back. That will contact onto the processor with some thermal grease between. And it'll secure by using um, some of these screws, which screw in um, like that. Now, the issue is these screw in from the bottom. Often on a cooler, you have something like, say, push pins. I've shown you before, so is fitting a, an Intel cooler, you push them from the top, or you have a bracket, like you could see when I fitted this um, AMD chip with a, with a separate cooler, and that, that screwed down from the top. So in those situations, you could do it all from the top of the board. Here, I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is to support the motherboard on, on these two old um, butter spread cottons, and that will enable me to take these screws and to fit them through and screw them in hopefully fairly easily. So, next thing to do is to take our, our thermal paste to remove obviously the top, and just to apply a small amount of thermal paste to the processor. We just want a very small bead here, about four or five mils, three or four mil. I think that will be perfect. And then we can just take our, our cooler and fit it onto the system. So it's gonna mount on top of here, we need to line it up roughly. Uh, it'll go on top of the processor there, just spin it around a bit, give it a little bit of motion just to spread out the thermal placed underneath. And then hopefully, my theory will work. It does, and I can start just putting in those screws. So there's four of these screws to fit, and when they're all fitted, I will finish them off on the back, make sure they're all nice and Tight, not too tight, but tight enough. And we'll end up with our cooler properly mounted on the motherboard. We then just need to take the um, wiring for the motherboard fan. I was hoping to fit that under there, but that looks rather tight. This is gonna fit in here. Get in there, that just connects it electrically to the board. Hopefully we can get the memory in past there. I think we can. These small boards are always oh, it's difficult to work with, but I think that'll work. Maybe just pull that out to let that, that wire around there. And then we need to start fitting some memory. As you may recall, our memory are these rather swish looking dims from Kingston. So we'll take the first one of these and fit it in. First dim slot. There we are, push it down, the things all click in and of course we'll take the second one might as well have all the memory uh, click that one in as well get in there we are that's the memory fitted and it's motherboard with its um, processor its cooler and its memory and now all ready to be fitted in the case right that seems a good place to bring part one of this build to a close Next time I'll show you putting everything into the case and I'll also run some performance tests. But now that's it for part one and I hope to see you again very soon for part two.